Well, the fork seals went in the 110 in the CRF, as you can see. And um, Honda's got these tabs that stick down on the bottom, so I had to make a clamp because this thing wants to just rock forward to make it stable. Um, my Yamaha sits fine on a stand. This this thing doesn't sit right, so I had to come up with a little something. So we're going to take this off, take it apart, replace these fork seals, and I have the faster mini spring that we're going to put in here. And this is the first time I'm doing this, so um, hopefully it's not too difficult. So it looks like this is a 19. I had already broken this loose, wasn't that loose. Now the size of 14. Crack this top to seventeen. That wasn't too too tight. Okay. Now I gotta get these pinch bolts. So, get this thing cleaned up a little bit. I'm curious to see how much oil is actually left in this thing. Because uh, I let him ride it. He's like, oh, Jed, I'm just going to do wheelies. Yeah, right. This is a six. Shoot, that thing's in there. I'm gonna stick something in there. socket because I don't know if that thing's going to want to pop off or not. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Wow, that's some junk to so bad. <laughs> oh. Here we got the spacer. Now there's supposed to be six ounces in there. Washer on top of the spring. So this went just like that.
Man, this makes me think I want to change the oil in my forks. This is what this oil looks like. Wow. I think we got most of it. What was in there? Four ounces, a little over four ounces. So he didn't lose all that much. You know, because gravity's going to keep most of it in the fork, but... reference this is the stock spring see how short it is and the stock spacer and this is the faster mini spring and of course you only need this much of a spacer for that so this washer is going to go here this cap is going to go like that and that's how it's going to go back in so as you can see it's I mean this is way thicker, way longer. It should make a difference. What Is there a washer in there? Anyway. There we go. There's the dampening rod. Which we're going to put back in. Okay. Gosh, I should put that paper down. And that should be it. Get this cleaned up. Okay. Now I have a new dust seal, so this one's probably going to go in the trash. But as for the seal itself, there's a little clip that we got to get out. seal itself. Okay, so this thing's really in there. You kind of got to go around and get it out this way. There we go. Now, this spring went inside. It's not supposed to come out. And you see the new one. There's a part number. You can see the this coil in there, so that's the way it's going to go. This is the bottom. This is the top. I guess it's only got to go down as far as just to get that clip back in. 
as you can see there's a space behind it and I seen some guys hitting it down with a punch or a socket or something but I think I can get that ring back in just pushing it down with my fingers So this is the old dust seal, there's the new one. Looks like it fits over pretty good. That did it. A couple of shots for good measure. Looks good to me. I tried to find a socket that was big enough to, to do it, but I didn't. Luckily, I just had that piece of pipe. But if you're getting the tools together to do this job, you might want to find something that'll just be big enough to go around that edge. So next we got to put the fork back in. So we're going to go with this. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, we got some oil. spring down there. Didn't notice that. So this spring at the bottom is under the is in the dampening rods so that didn't grab. It's got to thread into that. And if I can't catch that, that spring in to get tension on it. Maybe just want it down all the way. Try it again. Okay, I think we got it. Just had to push it down all the way. I think we caught the threads. So now, in re 
reverse order. We got the spring. And the washer. And the spacer. Okay, now I think we can tighten up the bottom one and then take this off and put the oil in. I think that's how it works. axle bolt again. That's pretty tight. Okay. So now, just got to get the oil. Alright, the Honda website says 6.1 ounces. The BBR website says 5.5. So we're going to try 5.5. So we want to get it in there. Now, see if it leaks. It's a lot stiffer, that's for sure. I think we're good. Get it put back in, tighten the top up, and put the wheel on. Match the other one. <clears throat> I want to do a little note here. 
uh, I ended up doing both forks. I saw some guys were just doing one fork. I did the one fork, it wasn't stiff enough, so I ended up doing both forks. What I did notice was on the first one that I did, there's also a tapered bushing in the bottom of this. And when I did the first foot fork, that tapered bushing stayed in. So I didn't even notice it was there. On the second fork, when I dumped it, the, the bushing came out. And it's, it looks like a bullet. It's about that long. But it has, it has to go in the way that it's tapered so that you can, when you screw in this bolt, it pulls it down. And I guess that seals it. So pay attention to that. If yours doesn't come out and it stays in there fork, it'll be fine as long as you can get this bottom bolt threaded into the dampening rod. But like I said on the second fork, when I dumped it out, that bullet came out. So I just paid attention which way it came out. And I also want to note on the second fork, I couldn't get the bottom bolt threaded into the dampening rod. So I put the spring in and tightened the top back up. And then that tension kept that dampening rod from spinning so I could get the bottom bolt started because that was hard to get that bottom bolt started. That, you got to make sure that bottom bolt grabs that dampening rod. If you screw this all the way in and you can still dump it out and the dampening rod comes out, it, you didn't get it. You got to get that dampening rod. So unfortunately we haven't had a chance to ride it because he's got a flat rear tire and I'm still waiting on a tube. These are the faster mini springs. I have the BBR springs in my bike. I'm, I'm sure they're probably pretty comparable. Um, and it totally changes the way, you know, you can ride the bike. You can ride it so much harder with the spring. So I'm excited to see what his opinion is when he finally gets it, you know, out there and, and is riding on it. We might have to do the back, I told him, because, you know, when you stiffen up the front and you leave the stock spring in the back, it might be too soft in the back. So we might do that. I did both in my bike. And um, if you're anybody, an adult or any over maybe 150, you want to make sure you do the suspension because this, the stock suspension is way too spongy. But just wanted to add that new. Um, this is not a hard thing to do. Watch a video, try it yourself. You really can't screw it up. It's the parts are cheap. Those springs are like 100 bucks. The seals are like 25, but not that hard to do. Something anybody could be able to do in their own garage if you got some basic hand tools. Or